Daily Bible Time, Dominic Steele. It is Friday morning and a new section of Isaiah today. The last four days we've been looking at the warnings against Israel, four warnings of God's pending judgment, and we saw that repeated refrain, my hand is stretched out still. Uh, in this next verse and next section, we learn that the instrument of God's anger, those who will bring God's judgment on his people Israel, well, it'll actually be the pagan nation Assyria. So you look at chapter 10, verse 5 of Isaiah, Woe to Assyria, the rod of my anger. The staff in their hands is my fury. So Assyria will be the instrument, the rod of God's anger, and yet God will pronounce judgment on Assyria. Woe to Assyria. Let me just keep going on this. Assyria will bring the judgment of Yahweh against the people of Yahweh. Assyria may not, probably won't know that they are the puppet of Yahweh or being used by Yahweh to do this, but they are. I mean, they are pursuing their own policy of military and political aggression, but God is actually using them as an instrument of judgment against his chosen people. Now, just as a principal note, that could be, that is, what does happen today. It's at least hypothetically possible that we could have anti-Christian governments, anti-Christian agents acting against the church, the people of God today. I mean, we do know that that is the case. But it could be that even though they're coming to their own anti-God political conclusions to act against the people of God, God is standing behind those things and orchestrating those things and using those things to bring judgment on his people who are in sin. That might be the case, that last step. Now, let's look at these verses. Isaiah 10, verse 6. Against a godless nation, Israel, I send him, Assyria, and against the people of my wrath I command him to take spoil and seize plunder and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. But he does not so intend, and his heart does not think, but it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off nations, not a few. For he says, Are not my commanders all kings? Is not Cano like Carchemish? Is not Hamath like Arpad? Is not Samaria like Damascus? And this is God speaking, quoting the king of Assyria, As my hand has reached to the kingdoms of the idols whose carved images were greater than those of Jerusalem and Samaria. Shall I not do to Jerusalem and her idols as I've done to Samaria and her images? David Peterson is noting that God is not simply allowing Assyria to fulfill his purposes as if this is a convenient outwork of historical circumstances for God. God is directing Speaking as a mouthpiece of the Lord, Isaiah is saying, I send Assyria and I command Assyria. Well, he does not speak openly to him and reveal his purposes to him. The Lord initiates and directs what the king of Assyria thinks he is doing in his own wisdom and strength. Assyria, says Samaria, the northern kingdom of Israel and Jerusalem, the southern kingdom, will be a pushover compared to its, his previous victories. He arrogantly boasts. He starts with the claim that the kings of neighboring nations have become commanders in his armies. And Samaria, Samaria and Jerusalem are dismissed as spiritually weak compared to proficient uh, idolaters in the other nations that Assyria has uh, dealt with. But the judgment will come on Assyria. Verse 12, when the Lord has finished all his work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, He'll punish the speech of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the boastful look in his eyes. Now, we'll do more on that on Monday, but I just wanted to think and have us reminded of God achieving his purposes through the wicked agents. I mean, we see that in the New Testament, and particularly we see that at the moment of the death of Jesus. Let me just remind you of this line from Acts chapter 4. Um, Truly... In this city, there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. In the moment of the murder of Jesus, Herod and Pontius Pilate and the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel all acted together against Jesus to do what God in his plan had predestined would take place. So we see God supervising the actions of the evil king, Assyria, 
to bring about his plans and purposes here in Isaiah 10 and in Acts, well, the end of the Gospels, the beginning of Acts, we see God supervising the actions of evil men to bring about his plans and purposes. We just see the sovereignty of God over all. Thanks for joining us on Valley Bible Time. Let's pray. Father, we pray that um, when bad things happen to your people, that we might reflect, is this a moment of your judgment? That we might have that moment of asking that question and not just assume somehow that you've taken your hands off the wheel, but we might trust that you are actually in control. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks for joining us on Daily Bible Time this Friday morning. See you Monday. See you at church on Sunday. God bless.